Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn about the repeater field, uh, and this is part of ACF Pro. So if you wanted to use it, you would need to purchase the actual plugin. Uh, the repeater field is very, very handy. It, if you ever need to repeat a bit of data, um, like for example, if you were going to display team members on a page, um, then the repeater field is awesome. So let's get straight into it and see what it actually does. Uh, in As an example, I'm going to create another team members page. And as you know, I've created a custom post type for that to show you how relationships work. But I'm just going to do it in ACF now without a custom post type. So I'll create a page first and I'll just call it team. And then I'll go into advanced custom fields and create a new field group called team members. And inside that field group, I want to create a field and I'll call that team and I'll make it a repeater field. So basically advanced custom fields is going to set it up as a really simple interface for you to just repeat things. Now, once you click the repeater field, it's going to come up with another area called subfields, And this allows you to create a template for each individual repeated item, if that makes any sense. So because we're going to be creating a team members page and we want to display team members, first thing we want to do is create this template. So for each team member, you want to grab, you want to show their name and we'll make it a text field. You then want to make it show their biography. We'll make that a text area field and we will make it so that automatically adds paragraphs. We'll also do a, an image, so a profile picture field and we'll make that an image field. And the last one is maybe we'll do a link so that you can a link to their Twitter page or something like that. And we'll make that a link page, a link field. Cool. So we have all the fields and then at the bottom you have all these different options. I'm going to leave them all default, but when you click on the repeat field to add a new field, you can choose the button label. I'm going to make it add team member. The last thing we want to do is obviously assign it to the team page. So we'll make it so that it only comes up when you go to the team page. So let's publish that. And then we'll go to pages and click on the edit the team page. You should now see we have the team members repeater field. So we can click into there and you'll see that it automatically has those fields. And if we click another team member, it will show those fields as well. And basically you can repeat the same template over and over again. So as you can see, it is very, very powerful. So I'm going to fill out some, some data here and let's then display it on the front end. So I'll just put my name. I'll put some lorem ipsum, oops, lorem ipsum into here. Lorem Ipsum into there, and Lorem Ipsum into there. We'll put Jane Smith and Bob Smith. Then we'll put some profile photos. So I'll just use the existing images that we have in the actual media gallery. And then we'll just link each person. If you watched the previous video on links, you can do a hard link to an actual external website, or you can do it within uh, your uh, internal website. So I'm just going to make it link to internally and I'll make this one go to Google. Cool. All right, let's update that. Let's go to our code editor and make it come into the template now. So I'm in my project. Uh, I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to grab the page.php and just create a new template, paste it in. Template name team save it as team.php. I'll call it template-team.php. And then I'll go into the team page and make sure that it is using that specific template. Cool. And let's view the page and obviously nothing is there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there's a clash between my pages. So I need to just call it maybe team, mem uh, team members. Let's call it team members instead. I'll change the permalink as well to team members. So yeah, I've just had a clash between the archive URL and the team members page. So refresh it again. Let's go view page. There we go, team members. And it's using the team template, of course. All right, cool. So now let's go into this actual template. 
and grab actually we do not we don't really need to grab the the variable like we've done in the past if you don't want to i'll show you how to use it that way but i'll also show you how to use it using functions that acf have created for us to control repeater fields so the first thing you want to do is you want to do a loop but we firstly want to check if there are fields that exist or that there are team members that are existing in the repeater field so we'll do php if have rows and the ID of the actual field is, I'm assuming it's team underscore members, but I'll just double check. Actually, it's just team and I'll change the label to make it a capital T. So if have rows team, close that off, PHP and if as well. And with inside the if statement, we want to do PHP while have rows and team again, and then the row and close off the end while loop. Now within here, what we can do is we can use a function called get the subfield or the subfield. So if we want to echo out the name of each individual person, if we go into the fields, you'll see they're called name, biography, profile, picture, and link. So let's go here and do PHP the field, sorry, the subfield, because it's a subfield of a field. The main field is a repeater field called team and the subfield, which is repeating, we'll use this function and we'll just put name in there. So this function just automatically echoes out the name. We'll refresh it and there you go. All the names are coming up. I'm just gonna pretty this up a bit. I'll make it an, UL class equals list group. And we'll make this li class list group item. Close it off and then close that off as well. Refresh. There we go. We have the three team members. And what other fields do we have? We have the biography. So we can do PHP, the sub field biography. Refresh. There you go. There's the biography. We could maybe make this an H4. So the names are a bit larger. We also have a profile picture. So let's see what happens with the profile picture. We'll do the pre-tags pre and we'll do print R, PHP echo, print R, and then we can do get the sub field and it's profile picture, I believe. Yep. Let's see what actually gets fed to us through that Okay, we've got a bit of an error here. Get the subfield. No, it's not get the subfield, it's get subfield. Refresh it. There we go. So it's got the image information here. It's got the sizes available. So to make it simple with images, what we could do is we can declare an, a variable up here. So we'll just call it image equals get subfield profile picture. And then obviously we can just make it print our, the image, same thing, but then we can actually grab the image URL. So let's say we're gonna use the thumbnail, okay? And it is in the sizes property. So let's do picture equals image sizes thumbnail. And then we can just do image source equals PHP echo picture. And we can then close that off, refresh it. There's the image in the thumbnail version. We can also do alt equals PHP echo image alt. Let's see how that works. Right click on it. We should hopefully be able to see an alt tag, but we can't. So. Let's see why that is. We'll do PHP print R 
print our image. And if we have a look here, alt, there's actually no alt associated with that particular image. So that's a false alarm. Refresh it. If we go into the media gallery and we actually put an alt on this particular image, so I'll just call it test. And go back in and refresh and right click here and have a look. It should have the alt as test now, as you can see. Beautiful. Uh, and the last one would be the link. So we could basically assign the link. Link equals get sub field link. And then we want to grab the link URL. So we could do a an anchor tag PHP echo link URL. And we could also do PHP uh, you might not want to link dynamically to the title of the link. So you could say view profile or whatever you wanted to do. Refresh it. There you go. Let's just say there's no link associated with that specific team member. If we say delete the, the link from there and click on update and refresh, what will happen is say uh, that person we removed the link from, which was Jane Smith, if we click view profile, it's not actually going to link anywhere because there's an error. So we need to do an if statement, PHP if link, PHP end if. That will make sure that there is actually a link to click on. So I would suggest you do if statements for every single one of them just to make sure that it doesn't cause an error if nothing exists. Same thing with the picture. PHP echo, or sorry, PHP if image, PHP end if. And same thing with name and biography. But as you can see, we're using the, the function which ACF has provided us with to echo out these. We can do the same thing. Just do name equals get sub field name. And we can also do biography equals get sub field biography and do PHP echo name and PHP echo biography. Refresh it. Same thing happens. Now, why would you do it this way instead of just using the inbuilt functions that ACF give us, like the field and the subfield? Well, it really comes down to how you like to code and if you like to, you know, um, declare your variables at the start and then use them within the uh, code. It also can come in handy if you want to do any calculations. So, for example, let's go into our custom fields and go into the team members repeater field that we created and create another one called, um, I don't know, uh, for example, hourly rate. Okay. We'll make that a number field and we'll update it. And then we'll go into our code and we'll do hourly rate equals get sub field. And I believe it's hourly underscore rate. We'll then go and view the actual page and refresh it in the back end. Put in a couple of hourly rates and update it. Now, uh, then we want to display the hourly rate. So we can do PHP echo hourly rate. Maybe put a dollar sign in front of it as well. View it on the front end. There you go. We've got the hourly rate there. But what if, you know, you wanted to kind of add uh, maybe a percentage onto it? You could easily just do uh, hourly rate equals get subfield hourly rate times. Maybe if you want to find out the GST or the tax uh, component of the hourly rate, you could do, you know, times 10 divided by 100. And then when you refresh it, it will actually come through as, you know, $10. So you can do some calculations before you actually echo it out. That's really the only reason why you'll do it this way, I guess, or just to separate your variables from the code. Um, 
maybe you wouldn't do it th that way. You would do something like this. Tax equals hourly rate times 10 divided by 100. And then you do inc php echo tax. Refresh. So 100 including $10 GST. Yeah, so that's just a very, very simple example. But as you can see, the repeater field is very, very, uh, it's a very important component in ACF and it has, it makes your life much easier when you need to do things like this. I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.